I apologize because uh, I understand that you have a very different background. Maybe some of you know everything or almost everything from this course. Definitely I can see some people who... Nevertheless, nevertheless the course will be called Qualitative Theory. of dynamical systems uh, it is usual that first uh, I give some references to text books. The first one is written by Anatoly Katok and Boris Hassel Blood. The title is Introduction to the Modern Theory of Dynamical Systems. Uh, it was first published by Cambridge University Press in 1995. Later uh, there were other editions, but uh, this is a very a large, a very thick book, which contains almost everything which we know about dynamical systems. But it's not so easy to read it. The proofs are short. I mean that you have to uh, add details by yourself. The second book is by Michael Brin and Gerrit Stuck Introduction to Dynamical Systems It was also first published by Cambridge University Press in 2002 and finally my own book its title is Spaces of Dynamical Systems published by it was first published in Russian then translated by de Gruyter uh, this is a edition of 2012 and it was recently there was recently a second edition in 2019 uh, 
it contained a new chapter devoted to invariant measures. And in my opinion, it is written simpler than other books. But of course, I will tell everything <coughs> which I want, I will tell by myself here. Uh, who has some first experience in dynamical systems, please indicate. Oh, 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 almost everybody. Nevertheless, so we start with uh, the simplest case, uh, dynamical systems. with the discrete time and I will start with the most general case where you fix a topological space I will denote it X capital and a homeomorphism I hope uh, I don't have to define what is a topological space under homeomorphism thank you very much uh, and uh, the main object which we study is defined in a very simple way. We fix some initial point x0 of x and consider this sequence x1 x0, x2, x minus 1, and so on. So uh, your initial point x0 gives rise to a sequence And these arrows just mean that we consider images under F. Uh, and what we get is called the trajectory of the initial point X0 in my system. So I first define functional degrees. of f, f to 0 is the identity mapping if k is positive, f k is this composition where you take f k times and for k negative F to K is uh, this composition of the inverse mappings. Uh, you take absolute value of K. And now we can, using this language, We can define the trajectory of 
of the initial point is just this set O x zero f is the set of points f to k x zero where k runs over integers. Uh, sometimes it's called orbit, which is the same. Uh, and this capital O comes from orbit, but uh, I will use the term trajectory. <coughs> and uh, uh, we get Uh, well, to be now, <laughs> what is a dynamical system? Uh, a dynamical system with phase space is a mapping phi which takes the direct product to x and has obvious properties uh, phi of 0 x is x for any x, phi m plus n x is phi m for any and finally This mapping is continuous for any x. It is easy to see that for any n. For any n. Thanks. It's easy to see that uh, we get an object of the type if we just put fkx is fk to x. This follows from the definition of zero degree. This is easily shown by induction and this is this also follows from the uh, definition. Uh, in fact, we can uh, mm, so what do we do? We start with a homeomorphism and we define this mapping phi. But it's easily seen that if I have a mapping phi with properties from one to Three, then there exists a homeomorphism f such that these holes just take uh, f phi 1x. Then uh, it is uh, it follows from property two that these equalities hold. You just use induction. So, for example, five phi 
to abscess phi 1 this comes from pro property 2 but this is f of x and this is f f square and so on uh, and then uh, if you get this equality, you get all other properties. So uh, both approaches give you the same result. You can start with a homeomorphism at eight degrees, and you can start with a dynamical system which is defined by these properties. So. Uh, Let me start from simple properties of trajectories. First, let it be lemma one. For any let n, the trajectory of x is the same. I will use this approach, so I will work with the homeomorphism. And this is obvious. You can take any initial point, uh, and then you just replace k by k plus n here, and when k runs over integers, k plus n for a fixed n also. Uh, what can we say about trajectories, types? Uh, there are three types. First, uh, if f of x0 is x0, then x0 is called a fixed point. This is a very general mathematical notion. Uh, it is used in many branches of mathematics and uh, it is clear that in this case the trajectory is just one point x. f maps x0 to x0 to x0 to x0. The second possible type. Assume that there exists say a positive n such that the points x0, f x0, f to n minus 1, x0 are distinct. And uh, Fn, x0 is x0. In this case, uh, x0 is called the periodic point. And the number n is called period or sometimes we will use period in a different sense. Uh, it's minimal. Period of x0. So you have, yes, a question? No, no. So please, if you have 
some questions or something is unclear, please stop me. Uh, and the situation is also very simple. You have n distinct points x0, x1, x2, and f Uh, maps them in this way and uh, one more possibility is that all points fk of zero are distinct so the trajectory is a countable set of points. And uh, in fact, uh, the main problem of the qualitative theory of dynamical systems is uh, to understand. So every trajectory is a very simple mathematical object. A point, a set of endpoints, or a countable set. And all the phase space x is the union of trajectories. It's clear. So the main question, there are two main questions. The first one is how to describe the decomposition of the uh, phase space into trajectories. Describe it usually topologically. So which dynamical systems give you the same decompositions up to a homeomorphism? Well, as usual, when we speak about some topological theories, um, uh, two objects are considered equal if there is a homeomorphism taking one to another one. Uh, and the second problem is to describe how this decomposition into orbits depends on the system. What happens if we change the system? What happens with this decomposition into trajectories? These are two main problems and we will look at them. Uh, in fact, uh, to be honest, I have to show that uh, there are no other possibilities. But this follows from a very old, also a very simple lemma, which we will use several times. Mm, let me denote this way the set of periodic points of F. <coughs> and very simple also. Everything will be simple here before we start uh, looking at examples, at non-trivial examples. Uh, a point x0 is periodic if and only if uh, its trajectory is finite. Proof. Uh, one application is trivial. We know that if it is periodic, then trajectory is finite. Um, now, if trajectory, if the trajectory is finite, uh, then it is periodic. Since uh, the trajectory consists uh, of a countable number of points, 
and we know that this set is finite, there exist two different uh, degrees such that f to n equals f to k. Since these are uh, different integer numbers, I may assume that see, n is uh, more than k, I can take m equal to n minus k, it will be a natural number. I can apply f to minus k to this, and uh, so I get f n minus k and 0 sub 0, this is f to m x0, and if I look at points with these degrees, if these are different, then of course m is the period. If there are two points, uh, two indices, two degrees, such that these points are equal, I can repeat this uh, mm, re reasoning with, say, k1 and 1, and I, I will decrease this number m, so finally I will get, yes, I had to say, this is usually mentioned, that uh, it is natural to treat a fixed point as a periodic point of period one. But historically, they are considered as different cases. But of course, uh, when I speak about this set, I must include fixed point here also. You think that the distance we should say is a n is greater than one? Hmm? If we want to say that there are distinct cases, we should say that n is greater than one. Not yes, yes, greater than one. Thank you. Right. To make them different. Well, uh, now we come to the second basic uh, object. Uh, consider a subset A of X, and A is called an invariant set. of my dynamical system if for any x in A its trajectory belongs to A. So if I start at any point of A, my trajectory remains and of course uh, it's easy to understand that this set S set A is invariant if and only if it equals its image. I'm a little ashamed to prove such things, but it's better to prove than uh, so if. Uh, A is invariant, I take a point X, then since trajectory belongs, Fx belongs to A, so Fa belongs to A, but also uh, the pre-image. And if I apply F to both sides, 
I can do everything applying uh, F because F is a homeomorphism, so it preserves inclusions. So so F of E equals A, and the converse statement is proved in the same way. And this gives us a very important, also very simple, but very important corollary. If A and B are invariant set sets, then the closure of I, the interior of, uh, of A, the boundary of A, uh, the union the difference they are all invariant well so uh, now I want to describe two examples of dynamical systems uh, which are not trivial because so of course you can uh, invent by yourself many many simple examples uh, I start with two examples which are non-trivial and which show that dynamical systems appear in many branches of mathematics. The first example is the Bernoulli shift. Of course, its origin is in probability theory, but uh, it's also a nice example of a dynamical system. So, uh, what will be the um, phase space? I consider two-sided uh, sequences uh, consisting of zero and units and k. So elements of my space are just two-sided zero unit differences. I want to make my space uh, not only to topological but a metric space. So if I have two sequences, two elements, I define the distance as follows, so I take sum over integers, absolute value, okay. divided by 2, uh, of course this series converge because this number are not more 
than one, and it is easily seen that it satisfies all the properties of distance. This is what I will not check. Uh, but I will uh, I will mention two properties, two simple properties of this distance. If I fix a positive epsilon, there exists a number n of epsilon such uh, n capital such that two uh, sequences coincide uh, on some set of that type, then So it's very simple. You take zero, you take this symmetric uh, set, and if, if they coincide here, then the distance is less. And just because you get uh, tails of this uh, Series and such that if this is also trivial. Space X, uh, now when I make it a metric space, it's a topological space also, it is compact. The second uh, property is something strange. Some Sorry? Uh, the second, second property is something strange that exists n from epsilon, so from epsilon is equal to minus one, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, you see, uh, this is. Uh, that, that exists and, and from epsilon. From epsilon, equal to minus one. Oh, it's easy for me to formulate it this way. Then I will use it. Uh, is it uh, clear? Is it known that it's compact? Uh, well, uh, the natural reference is the uh, Tikhonov how it's called product theorem that mm, any product of uh, Compact spaces with the Tikhonov topology is compact, but here it's clear that X is uh, maybe and. Uh, of product topology is uh, generated precisely by this distance, but you can show it directly. Not Tikhonov theorem is a difficult theorem. I, I'm not sure that all of you know the proof, uh, but uh, it's easy 
to avoid the Tikhonov theorem and just to use a more simple theorem that for a metric space uh, compactness is equivalent to uh, mm, say sequence compactness forgot that term. Sequential, yes, sequential. So uh, every sequence has a convergent subsequence. Well, so enough to show that X is sequentially compact. So let me consider a sequence where each AM is oh, maybe better. We want to select a convergent subsequence, and this is done. Uh, the idea is very simple. First, we consider this sequence of zero elements. Uh, the possibility for every element is to be zero or one, so of course we can select a conversion subsequence. So okay, zero such that So if I write my uh, will be a zero, a one, a two, we fix zero elements and select a subsequence which is convergent. Then from this subsequence we select a subsequence for which this sequences converge and so on. So it's a kind of diagonal process. Well, now we define the dynamical system. I will denote it sigma. And this is defined in this way. If I take a sequence A, its image B is defined as follows BK equals AK plus one for every K. This is precisely the Bernoulli shift. So if I have a zero, a one, a two, B zero, B one, B0 equals A1, 
B1 equals A2, B minus 1. So we just shift the sequence to the left. Mm. And uh, this is a homeomorphism. The inverse mapping is uh, obviously defined as shift to the right by one. Uh, and they are both continuous. If I take, I want to show this, sigma is continuous. Uh, I want this to be less than epsilon. For this, it is enough that um, sigma a k equals sigma a prime k m k for k less than n of epsilon. Uh, and of course, uh, for this, it is enough that a k equals a prime k for the sigma shifts at one, so to coincide. Uh, for this, and this is it enough, they can say it. And uh, then it's clear that for this it is enough that uh, this holds for. Okay. Yes? Maybe the second uh, second uh, uh, property here may, maybe some, something like that for any n exists epsilon such that this holds. No, no, for me this is enough. So uh, I take epsilon, I want to uh, estimate distance between them. It's enough that uh, sigma of A and sigma of A prime coincide on some interval. Well, and for this it is enough that they coincide say, an interval of length one more. And for interval of length one, on one more, we should uh, take delta such that if... Uh, yes, we, we should take delta such yes. that if uh, distance... So it's, it, is, uh, the, no, it is not the second uh, property there. We, it's property that for any n there exists epsilon. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so. No, 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 no. We, we have n and we want the property a k is equal to bk for k less or equal than n. So n is given and then yes. we should choose. Yes. So here it will, should be exist not uh, exist delta from n or epsilon from n zero such that. 
and it makes sense. No, replace this by, by delta. Yes, and here for any delta exists m. Yeah. And we should, uh, we, for delta we take m from here, but we sh may take uh, vice versa. Here for any epsilon we have m. Yes. But there we have n and some n is, is equal n of n from epsilon plus one and we may choose delta for this n, not uh, what I need There exists delta such that if then this holds. Okay? Yes. And, and, and uh, uh, and uh, I take here delta and uh, no, the n is uh, well. The I take delta here and for yes, and for this delta you have some n from delta, which isn't n from n big n from epsilon plus one. Yes. Well, of course, I had to say that both tend to infinity. It would be enough. Yes, but it, it, so, 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 as I said uh, uh, earlier, this uh, claim doesn't make sense. It's uh, it, and we ch use that for any epsilon exists n, but not for n for for epsilon, not n from epsilon, but ep epsilon from n for any, not for any epsilon we choose n. We for any n have epsilon such that if distance is small then uh, n uh, initial uh, yeah we can write, write this way yeah and uh, now uh, this is fixed Yeah. And I take small delta and, and small of epsilon is big enough, larger than this. Well, thank you. Uh, well, they, of course, they both tend to infinity. So we really get a dynamical system. We get a homeomorphism. And Here it is easy to establish some properties which I need later. The set of periodic points is infinite. Okay, what is mm, a periodic point? What uh, happens if we apply uh, degrees? So uh, if, let me start with the sequence AK and I denote a one sigma of a a two it is clear that from the definition a one k is a k plus one a 
2k is escape and so on. Every uh, application of sigma adds 1 to the lower index. So uh, sigma to m a equal a clearly is equivalent to a k is a k plus m for any k. So periodic points are precisely periodic sequences. And of course the set of periodic sequences is uh, infinite. Property 2 uh, the set of periodic points is dense in X the closure also the proof is more or less obvious what have I to show that if I take any point of X and any neighborhood, then there is a periodic point in this neighborhood. So I take a point A, I take a positive epsilon, and I take this N capital of epsilon. So if this is my sequence A0, every sequence which coincides with A for this indices belongs to the epsilon neighborhood of uh, a okay distance and now I construct a periodic sequence I take this block let me call it a and I just add it periodically to the right and to the left Of course, I get a periodic sequence if I add the same block, and it uh, coincides with my initial sequence A for this indices. So periodic points are dense. Uh, and one more property we will see later that it is uh, useful in the theory of dynamical systems. There exists an element A of my phase space such that the closure sigma of its trajectory is uh, x. I'm sorry. Uh, let me, I had to define it previously, uh, let me define the positive semi-trajectory O plus XF is the set of FK, F to K of X non-negative k. So instead of the com complete trajectory we consider only uh, the right hand side, uh, the right hand part of the trajectory. Uh, so there exists 
an element A is such that the closure of its positive semi trajectory is all the space. It's also not difficult. Let us construct this point A starting with A0. So here is zero index. I take a zero equals zero, a one equal one. A two A three equals zero. So maybe better it is to zero one zero zero then zero one one zero one one I put all uh, zero zero no yes I put all uh, these two element mm, sets of zero one different to the right. Then I put all three element sets and so on. And I get a sequence such that if I have any block, finite block of zero and ones, there is such a block somewhere to the right of zero. I put all the blocks. And uh, this sequence A has the desired property. So I take any A is busy, so let it be. And I take an arbitrary epsilon. So if, if I have some sequence which coincides with uh, B for these indexes, its distance to B is less than epsilon. But this is a finite sequence of zero and ones, so there is such a block somewhere in my sequence A. And after a proper number of shifts to the left, uh, sigma say and to A will have the same block as B. This is our first example. And the second example will be at the first glance uh, quite different. And only later we will see that uh, these two systems are really related. So example two is uh, the hyperbolic Automorphism of the two toros.
Uh, let me consider the two-dimensional torus as the Euclidean plane uh, boop. The word. Uh, factorized over the uh, unit lattice in the plane. So I take the unit lattice and I uh, say that two points of the plane x1, x2 and y1, y2 are equivalent if the differences of the coordinates are integers. So I identify all the points and it's very well known what happens. I take this square, I identify points of the upper and lower sides and also of the right hand and left hand sides. First when I identify I get a cylinder and then I identify the circles and get the two-dimensional torus. Now I uh, take um, a linear mapping of the plane which takes A vector x to this vector. Uh, it is clear that if I have two uh, two-dimensional vectors which are equivalent, then uh, the images are also equivalent because. Uh, the components differ by integer numbers and when I apply this integer valued matrix they gain. So I get really, in fact I get uh, the corresponding mapping of the torus. It is called hyperbolic automorphism of the two torus, but also it has uh, two different names, Arnold's map and cat map. Arnold, Vladimir Igorich Arnold was the first one who started to study it seriously in the theory of dynamical systems. That's not true. That's maybe a Russian point of view because in fact uh, it was considered by René Tom who first introduced it in the theory of dynamical systems and later so studied by Steve Smale, uh, but nevertheless this is an international, internationally adopted name. Uh, and the second name, cat map, also goes to uh, Arnold because he what did he do? He uh, 
took this image of the cat, applied this mapping on the torus and looked at the So, uh, my advice, if you didn't do that previously, do this, and I will bring and show you the Arnold's picture. It is impressive. Well, uh, in fact, uh, we get a good mapping of the torus. We get, we get uh, homeomorphism. Why? Uh, uh, if I look at uh, the determinant, it is one. And this means, this implies, that the inverse matrix is also a matrix with integer uh, entries. So, uh, of course, if I take the mapping of the plane uh, with this matrix and the corresponding mapping of the torus, uh, I get the inverse of f. So f is invertible and in fact f is very good in local coordinates. If I take any point and in local coordinates it's a linear mapping. It's very good, it's analytic. It's so we get a very nice mapping F and uh, uh, what can we say I think we have time to uh, understand what are periodic points of F So, of course, it's enough for me to consider points of this unit square. And a point is periodic. if and only if it is a rational point. This is also very simple, but maybe not completely trivial. Uh, take a natural number n and consider all the points where We get all points, all rational points of the torus with a denominator n. I do not assume here that uh, they are relatively prime. I just take all uh, 
let me denote this set by Pn. And it is easy to see that F takes it to itself. I take integer combinations and uh, fractional parts. But this set is finite. So any trajectory in this set is finite. And we have seen that a finite trajectory is a trajectory of a periodic point. So uh, all these points are periodic. And all rational points uh, are in one of these sets. Uh, well, let P be a periodic point. Take it representative in the plane. What does it mean that P is a periodic point? It means that there exists an N such that F and P equal P. And it's easy to see that this is equivalent to A to N P is where this is a vector with integer coordinates. But this is uh, equivalent to a n minus, let me add identity. Uh, what can I say about this matrix? Why is this invertible? Because if we look at the eigenvalues of this matrix, they are if I'm not mistaken. So uh, they are not roots of unity. So for any and this matrix does not have unit eigenvalues. So the this matrix is non-singular. It has the inverse. More than that, A is integer valued. So A to N is also integer valued. So this matrix is its entries are integer. Then it is easy to show that the inverse matrix has rational entries. Uh, rational uh, eigenvalues. No, rational. I'm sorry. Here the entries are integer. For the inverse, the entries are rational. Because we get them from some integer numbers divided by the determinant. Here must be the inverse. Uh, 
I'm sorry. We have this, and we apply. This is an integer vector, and this is a matrix with rational entries, so the product is rational. So every periodic point has uh, rational coordinates. Verse. So again, we have the situation similar to uh, the Bernoulli shift. We have infinitely many periodic points, and uh, they are dense in the torus. The last property uh, that we have a dense positive trajectory. This is also true, but uh, I cannot prove this by, in a short way. We will see that this will be a corollary of some general results. And uh, clearly, they have quite different origin, origins, these two dynamical systems. I mean Bernoulli shift and the hyperbolic automorphism of the two torus. But as I said, they are in fact related. And we will see that one of them is, in a sense, a subsystem of another one. And here I usually ask the question, who is the subsystem? Well, the shift. We will see that at the first glance, a very simple mapping of the torus, it generates very complicated dynamics with uh, a lot of shifts of various types, but that's what we'll see. Thank you.